Hello, everybody. All right, everybody's uh, coming on into the webinar. Hope everybody's doing well today. We're going to get started here in just one second as we wait for people to log in. So, now we have a bunch of people on today's webinar. A lot of people interested in uh, lean technologies and lean techniques and how to run a better business. So, um, um, you know, very excited. I haven't done a lean webinar in a while. I wrote the book in, you know, last year and uh, it has been a while since I've actually presented on lean. Um, actually, actually the book came out in 2018 and time has flown really. So um, we're just going to get started here in a second um, as people uh, kind of roll in. So um, I guess, you know, one of the first things I'd like to kind of ask everybody, let's, let's, let's kind of get used to the tools. I, I want to make this as interactive as possible, right? So um, let's do that. So let's, let's launch a poll. All right. This is just a practice poll. So uh, this is just a little pop culture quiz. Okay. Um, you know, as people are rolling in, let's see what people have to say about things. Okay. So very important. Who is your favorite Ted Lasso character? Is it Roy, Keeley, Ted, Rebecca, or other? Okay. So Take a look at your screen and please participate because, you know, this is the way that we're going to make this like a lot of fun and very interactive um, is by, you know, participating in, coal, in, in polls and, um, and, and chatting with me in the chat widget, right? So um, let's see what people have to say. All right. All right. And the other question is, is that did you enjoy any of the following books? So, so one thing that I, I love about working with lawyers is that, you know, they're, um, they like to read. In fact, I, I've thought about even like starting a reading club, uh, like a monthly kind of book club for people online. Um, but all right, um, let's see more people. A lot of people are not watching Ted Lasso. It is absolutely phenomenal. You got to watch it. It's, it's a lot of fun. Um, oh, so um, I, by the way, in terms of the books, I wanted to represent a couple of different genres. So I put like, you know, some nonfiction. Um, I put, um, you know, whatever, somebody put there's uh, no place to record a no vote. Um, okay, then just put like what other book you recommended in in the chat widget, or if you don't like to read at all, just put, yeah, I don't like to read at all in the chat widget or whatever. So I'm always looking for books to read. Okay, um, let me share my screen. Uh, most people don't watch Ted Lasso, by the way. And um, the people that uh, had the most response was to The Gentleman in Moscow, which if you haven't read that book, it's one of my favorite books in a, in a long time. All right, let's get started. So um, I'm gonna share my screen right now. And um, let's make this as interactive as possible. Um, so <clears throat> I'm gonna talk and talk and talk and that's gonna be boring. Well, hopefully not. But the more you interact, the more you ask me questions, the better off things will be. So, but in any case, I guess the big question is like, who the hell am I? So, um, you know, my, I started Rocket Matter, so I was the software architect behind uh, Rocket Matter in 2007. And uh, back then, it was, you know, there there really were no web-based software options for law firms to do practice management and time and billing. So, built Rocket Matter, and off off it went. And uh, you know, we've been in business ever since. It's now like what 14 years later, and continue to do our thing. We got customers all over the world. Um, but, you know, um, I got kids, I'm married, I got animals and all that kind of stuff that goes along with it. So I also wrote with this guy, Dave Maxfield. So I'm a co-author of this book called The Lean Law Firm, and it was published by the American Bar Association in 2018. And last year, we uh, have an Audible version. So um, fun fact, the Audible version is a lot cheaper than the actual version from the ABA. So if the ABA knows that I'm saying this on the webinar, they're probably going to be like pretty annoyed with me. But the nice thing about the audio version is that you don't actually have to manually turn pages. You can listen to it. We also have a podcast. We haven't published an episode in a while, but we've been, um, we have like close to a hundred episodes on lean topics. Just go to the lean law firm, uh, book.com. And there's also all sorts of like free resources, uh, that are linked to kind of things in the book. So there's like spreadsheets and so on and so forth. So there's a lot of good stuff on leanlawfirmbook.com. So let's keep moving. Um, in general, this is the mindset behind lean is that you kind of want to understand what you're doing at your law firm to bring value to the client. 
if, if you're not doing something that brings value to the client, then that's considered waste. So in lean, really, there's two core concepts. One of them is waste and one of them is value. So you want to eliminate the waste and you want to focus on value. That's kind of in a nutshell what's going on. So what lean forces you to do is kind of think through all of the things that you do at work and figure out what you should continue doing and what you should get rid of altogether. Okay. So um, with that said, all right, with that, let's do this. Um, I'm going to ask you guys another poll that I have ready to fire up and I really need you to participate. Okay. So this is going to help us like guide the webinar. So here's the poll, which is that like, and, and be honest, you know, you don't have to be afraid of hurting my feelings. Like what is your primary motivation for joining us today? Is it CLE credit? You want to earn more revenue at your law firm? Did you hear about lean and you want to know more? So, you know, I know people are like, um, you know, when they attend webinars, sometimes they put it on and they go vacuum the house. But if you can return your attention to the screen and please vote on this. Um, are you interested in law firm processes and operations at all um, or other? So, you know, let's uh, be frank and just let me know what the primary interest is in um, uh, your attendance today. And if it's just CLE credit, that's fine too. I'm cool with that. Um, the next thing I, I'd like to understand is like how many total employees are in your law firm? Um, are you a solo? Do you have two to five users? Is it six to 10 users? Like, where are you, you know, um, in terms of like layout? Because the more people that are at your firm, the more complex your firm's operations are. You know, if it's one person, you can just decide to do whatever it is you want to do and move forward and not have to answer to anybody. But the second you have another person that, you know, uh, if they have to answer to you, that's a different story. But like if you have another partner or so on and so forth, then, you know, that's when things become a little bit more complex. Um, and then as you go up the scale, if you're like in a six to 10 user firm or a 51 plus user firm, um, then, you know, that that can be that can be uh, tough. So uh, here we go. And, and the last thing I want to understand from everybody is that if you had to guess what's the least efficient part of your law firm. Um, and uh, so we have the, the options I put was like collecting dollars, uh, invoicing and processing the invoices, uh, filing and document management, um, specific phase of legal work. And I said in, in the chat widget, like, let me know what it is that is inefficient that you feel or, or something else altogether. So use the chat widget and communicate to me. Um, and then let's kind of see uh, what people responded with. All right. So in terms of the people that um, like are mostly interested in CLE credit, um, and that's your motivation for joining, I will tell you that today's uh, webinar is only accredited for half an hour uh, or 0.5 credits for Florida Bar general credits for CLE. So if that's your primary motivation and uh, you know 0.5 credits doesn't do it for you, then no, no harm, no foul if you want to like duck out of here. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Um, a lot of people want to or, or learn about like lean in general and, and operational processes. It looks like the mode is most people are solos on this call, which is going to make it very easy for you to start implementing things. Um, uh, it looks like most people are in like small firms or less than 10 and like um, only one person is in a 51 or larger uh, person firm. Um, so if you're in that firm, that 51 or larger person firm, I would like to know what your role is, because um, if you're like, I want to know if you're an administrator or managing partner or so on and so forth. And then the mode on this one, least efficient part of your law firm, filing, document management, so on and so forth. Um, so, um, <clears throat> all right, so we'll, we'll talk about some of this stuff because, because it does affect, and I, I can show you like, you know, some different techniques and stuff that you can do. All right, um, here we go. Let me just see real quick if there's any like uh, chat widget activity. Okay, someone said they loved reading The Republic by Plato. So, all right, um, like little light reading. Here we go. The, oh, we got one more chat. Um, and, the, and the person in the 55 lawyer firm is of counsel. All right, so here we go. Um, The basic thing we're gonna kind of focus on is like how these processes tie into revenue, right? And how reducing waste ties into revenue because there's a real effect. Uh, we're gonna talk about what types of waste there are. There's many different kinds. 
And we're going to talk about constraints because uh, theory of constraints is kind of a big idea in like business and manufacturing. And um, it really dictates uh, what you're able to do and uh, in surprising ways, actually. So we're going to talk about tech. And the first thing that the way that we're going to dive into this is, is really answer this following question, which is, is a law firm so different from a factory? Now, this is not something I would dare to put out there because I'm not a lawyer. I'm a software engineer that serves lawyers. Uh, but um, this concept is really kind of comes from directly from my co-author. My co-author is um, a, he does contingency-based billing. So basically he, he represents consumer in like, cons, it's like a consumer defense law firm. And so he gets paid whenever he wins. And um, this is how he viewed things. He, he went out when he started his law firm and he, he read everything there was to know about like kind of like processes and industrial kind of things. And he, he really became attracted to lean. And from my angle, I, I knew about lean and I knew about different techniques like agile and things like that because of my exposure in the software industry. And, and then when I started looking at law firms all across the country and I saw how, how um, inefficiently they operated, I was, I was, to be honest, I was very shocked that law firms don't operate in a more efficient manner. And I, I, don't, I, I don't think it's a surprise. I think you know, most people went to law school um, and that, that, that a law school that did not teach management or that did not teach business. And in my opinion, that's a real shortcoming of the law school education because it's no secret that 88% of all lawyers end up in a firm that has 25 people or fewer. It's no secret that the average size of a law firm is like four people. So if, if that knowledge is commonly available, then why aren't they teaching people how to run a business? Anyhow, I'll get off my soapbox now, but the, the reality is, is that a law firm is a lot like a factory. Um, so, I mean, before I leave this slide, a factory has like raw materials that come in and a finished product that comes out. And a law firm is the same, but the raw material is really the problem that the client has. So a client comes to you with an issue that you need to solve for them or help them out with. And um, at the end, we some sort of resolution happens to the client situation and money is exchanged usually. That's kind of how it works. So in a factory, things are a little bit different. In a factory, you have an assembly line. So, and things kind of progress through it. It's not a physical thing that you can see in a law firm. It's not like you have a little assembly line and matters are all over the place. That's not how it works. Um, so what, what you can do though, is you can model your processes with things called Kanban boards. And a Kanban board is an example of is what you see exactly on your screen right here. Usually something that is divided into swim lanes and the matters travel through the swim lanes. So this is about as simple example of a Kanban board as you can possibly see. There's like up next, there's work in progress, and there's done, okay? So for up next, you see I have two matters in there and work in progress, there's another two matters in there, and then you see done. Now, um, I'll show you another example of what a Kanban, band, a Kanban board would look like. And um, let me show you what it looks like in our product. So if I go to Rocket Matter, for example, and I go to Kanban board, this is what a Kanban board might look like for uh, an auto accident type of matter. So we have many more swim lanes than um, not started work in progress and done, right? So we have client receiving treatment, then can we move it to demand, then litigation, then settlement, then file closed. And you can see it's a little bit more sophisticated here because we can see on each matter card here, index card, um, you know, how many, how many more days um, I have left in order to do certain things or how long it's been sitting here. And if, if it's green, it's, which means that it's on time, if it's red, it's overdue and so on and so forth. So there's like a lot more sophistication in an electronic board. But uh, for all intents and purposes, you can go ahead over to your whiteboard right now and, and put some swim lanes in place and get little index cards and move them around for yourself so you can see where things go. And and it seems like the dumbest, most simple way to manage things, but it has pretty significant implications uh, that we'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, there's something that we need to talk about, which is called the income formula, which is a huge part of our book. 
And basically, um, the income formula is, is really like a very, very, very boiled down financial model. Um, most businesses use financial modeling to try and predict what kind of income or revenue they're going to have over the next year. Um, so what we put one together was is one uh, that we think is relevant for attorneys. And it has really three components. Income equals throughput rate times something that we call average unit value. And by the way, this graphic is from the Lean Law Firm book. What we did with the Lean Law Firm book is we actually commissioned like a, a comic book artist to like make it somewhat of a graphic novel. Uh, so like we thought that would be kind of interesting. <laughs> so, or a fun way to present this information. So if income equals throughput rate times average unit value, well, what does that mean? Okay, so first we need to define throughput rate. A throughput rate is the number of case units your law firm finishes during a given time. Okay, so finishes has a very specific definition that we'll talk about. Let's go back to that Kanban board I showed you. So if you go to that done column and those three matters, if those were finished in the same year, you have a throughput rate for your year of three, right? Very simple idea. It's just how many things finish during a certain time period. Um, you know, in your head, start thinking about restaurants. So you've been to restaurants, you may have worked at a restaurant. If you've worked at a restaurant um, or you know about them, you know that um, they, the more tables that they serve, the more money that they're going to make. So if you think about from a restaurant's perspective, the number of total tables that they serve in a given night is their throughput rate for that night, right? Um, so the higher that throughput rate is, the more money the restaurant makes. So that's, that's one component, right? The next thing is the average case unit value or the average unit value. So here's where we start saying, okay, on average, this is what my case is worth. Now, this is where a lot of attorneys fall into this trap where they're unable to like think abstractly about the work that they do. Um, a lot of people are like, so when I present this idea to people, they get stuck. Um, they get, they're like, well, some cases that I work on, um, you know, I make very little money. In other cases that I work on, I make a whole bunch of money. So how can it be an average? Well, I'll tell you how there can be an average. You take all your cases, you take the values of them, and you divide it by the number of cases, just like you come up with any other average, right? So if you have one case that's worth $2, another case that's worth $8, um, on average, your case is worth, what would that be? <laughs> it would be, it would be 10 divided by two, it would be $5, right? So that's what an average uh, case unit value would be. Um, that's just how it works. It's, it's abstraction. And that's how we predict things. It's the same thing with rocket matter. We have the same situation. We have solo attorneys firms, and we have firms that have like 150 users on them major difference in firm size, but we can average them. We also do payment processing, right? And we have firms that process like $100 a month. We look, we have firms that literally process a million dollars a month in credit cards. And, but on average, we can say that on average, our firms collect $15,000 in credit card processing. And, and the reason that that's important is because we can then use that to financially model what's going to happen down the road. Um, uh, somebody said that, uh, thank you for hosting the CLE. This CLE is uh, for the state of Florida. It's going to be 0.5 credits. It's for Florida only. If you are applying for uh, CLE in another state, you are completely on your own. Um, we will be distributing recordings and slides. And if you can use that, then um, you're in business. Okay, any other questions right now while I'm uh, uh, taking a quick break here? All right, so uh, all right, I kind of talked about this before. You have cases of various different sizes. Some of them will have an average. All right, now, if we, the reason that this is important, a financial model is because once you isolate these variables, throughput rate, average case unit value, then you can start figuring, all right, there may be ways here that I can increase our income. So we can either increase the number of cases we finish in a year, 
or we can increase our average case unit value and that way we can increase our income. So let's go into each one of these, right? So this is the whole idea is like, we're gonna start seeing why waste is important and why all these uh, subjects are kind of interrelated. All right, the first question is, is that how do we increase the throughput rate? So if we can increase our throughput rate, we make more money, great. If the restaurant can turn more tables, they can make more money, perfect, all right. So how do we do this? Well, we have to shorten something called cycle time. So cycle time is a big concept in business in general. You might have heard of a sales cycle. Um, well, really, they're talking about the cycle time of the sales process, right? How, and, and that's why it's called cycle. Um, so how long does it take to get something done? And when we're talking about, let me just see what my next slide is here. This is important. It's, it's between the time that you accept the case. So let's say that the engagement letter is signed and, that, and the, that it's done. Now, when I'm talking about done, I don't mean that the case is like finished. I mean, it's finished and money is collected. All monies are collected. That's what done means. Now, this is, law firms have notoriously poor collection practices. Um, it's just part of the ball game. It's, and it, it, and it's, it's, it's not something that you should judge yourself about. It's not something that you should fault yourself about. There's just, you're a lawyer. And your job is to help people. And so not only does collecting um, take you away from doing actual legal work, but there can be something very unpalatable or, or distasteful about asking your client who you're trying to help, oftentimes through a major life crisis, for money. It's a tough gig, right? But when we're talking done here, we're talking about from the time you accept case and everything, money is collected and, and all that kind of stuff. So um, Thinking about the Kanban board again, the amount of time it takes a matter to travel through the whole Kanban board is your cycle time. So the question is, is if, if, if that's the cycle time, how do we shorten it, right? And that's where waste comes in. And lean comes from the Toyota production system. So what happened was, is that like going way back in history, like after World War II, when we were trying to rebuild Japan, we sent some industrial engineering experts over there to help them like get their factories up and running. But then they took over and they did some really inventive things. Um, and especially a guy named um, Taishi Ono at Toyota, he invented something called the Toyota production system. And he, and he kind of quantified all these different types of waste and he's really the godfather of lean. So it's kind of funny, it went full circle. What happened is in the um, late eighties and the early nineties, we had our own, we had American industrial engineers go back over to Japan to study how they became so good at manufacturing with so few errors. You remember there were like movies made about this. There was a movie called Gung Ho, where, I mean, you grew up when I grew up, you remember that American cars had like a bad reputation for quality. So in this movie, I think Michael Keaton like has to like go, like they, they work with the Japanese to improve the processes uh, in the American factory. So, but the generalized methods that Toyota introduced across all things have been called lean and they've been introduced into government and they've been introduced into the healthcare system and pretty much every industry aside from legal. They're, they're in software as well. And, and just because it applies to, just because it came from cars doesn't mean there's nothing we can learn from, from, from that when we're doing knowledge work because we still have concepts like inventory and motion and weighting and overproduction and things like that and defects. And so we're gonna take a look at that. We're gonna take a look at each waste one by one. Now I want you ideally um, on the webinar right now, you got a pencil in your hand and you're thinking through some of this stuff in your own law firm. That's kind of how it's going to be the most productive use of your time. And unless you're here just for the CLE credit, if you're here just for the CLE credit, God bless. But if you wanna try and improve your profitability, here's the time where you need to start jotting down some ideas. Um, I do have a question. Let me see where we are with that. Um, <laughs> all right. Somebody wrote, I have a client for whom I successfully tried a case that took 3.5 years to get to trial. She ran out of money to pay my fees, but I carried it through to successful completion. This is very nice and generous of you. She is paying me at the rate of $50 per month, and it will take her 34 years to complete payment of all my fees, and I'm already 70 years old. Oh, my. All right. Well, um, <laughs> that's a very generous payment plan. 
but you know, um, hopefully it worked. It, it was a successful result for your client. Um, but if we operate like that all the time, then we're going to kind of run out of money. So, um, but that's a pretty funny anecdote. Now, uh, transportation and motion waste. So let's think about this. this. This has to do with the kind of physical elements of running a law practice. Now think about this stuff. I mean, and don't blow it off as like, okay, that doesn't apply to me. Let me tell you a story. So Dave, uh, my co-author, he thought it would be more efficient. He thought it would be more efficient than whenever he filed his cases. What he was doing was he was having somebody uh, go down to the courthouse and have them file the cases in, in person. But he, th he thought that was like a bad use of people's time. So what he started doing was he started like mailing them in, like doing the whole certified mail thing and, and, and getting the response from the courts. But then he realized that the cycle time on his cases was extended out by seven days. Uh, because if he went down to the courthouse and filed them the same day, then he gets them filed immediately and he doesn't have to wait seven days. So the start date is seven days prior. So um, you have a lot that's not in your control in this business. Uh, if you are dealing with opposing counsel or you're dealing with the courts, obviously you have rules of civil procedure. Um, you, you can have um, opposing counsel come in with God knows what. You can have the judge come in with something. The judge might not rule on a hearing for like years. So um, you have issues that are beyond your control, but you have things that are in your control. And that's what you have to focus on. Um, electronic signatures, okay? Um, first of all, from a client's perspective, love electronic signatures. And in Florida, you can do electronic notarization now. Um, that's kosher. So um, some of these things that are like lengthy manual processes involving sending things back and forth can be completely eliminated and you can reduce the amount of time taken to work on things. And usually everybody's happier as a result. Um, inventorying and waiting, okay? This is where you kind of like for those of you that are solos, you kind of need to look in the mirror here. Um, for those of you that are in firms with like multiple people that are involved in the process of legal work, that's where you ne need to kind of take a look at their work. Um, first question is, are you closing out cases promptly? So this is a big one, guys. For, for small law firms, one of the things that we notice is that they do work on cases, but stuff just kind of sticks around like before it gets finished. But if stuff is sticking around before it gets finished, that means that you're not collecting money on it a lot of times, right? So um, law firms can approach a downward spiral. This is a very important point. So if you're like vacuuming right now I, I, and, and you're in a small law firm, this is like one of those, put down the vacuum and, 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 and pay attention to this one. What we find is that a lot of times law firms think they need more clients because they need more revenue. Sometimes they can be 100% correct, but more often than not, the real issue is that they're not finishing their cases quickly. And so they have all these accounts receivable and all these money. I've seen, I've seen small law firms with two attorneys have like $80,000 in accounts receivables, $100,000 in AR. So um, closing and collecting is going to do more for your cash flow than going and signing up for some sort of crazy expensive like internet marketing service or fine law where you're spending three or five grand a month and then that money is now tied up and then you're not closing out your cases and then the next thing you know you become tangled so you don't want to do any of that you want to close out cases as prompt as you can then you need to take a look does somebody have a big inbox are you waiting on people a lot like is that a thing is, is there somebody in the firm that is holding you all up take a look at that right and that's it, and you'll start seeing if you start using kanban boards you'll start seeing those constraints happen um, okay. Um, <clears throat> I've talked about this before, but invoicing and collections is like kind of like one of the biggest problems that law firms have. And I can show you what a good billing and collection flow will look like because that's kind of what I know best. Um, so we talk about this a lot in the lean law firm. Okay. The, um, next major kind of we touched about we touched on this when we did the poll, but probably the the next biggest thing that you could uh, do in running an efficient law firm and in in shortening cycle times and and eliminating waste is to go paperless, right? Uh, by the way, I say muda here. Waste is muda is the Japanese or the lean word for waste in this system. 
so um, it, it's kind of funny. I, I do a, uh, every November, it's kind of like, it's like Shark Week at Rocket Matter, but it's not really Shark Week. It's paperless office month. So uh, every November, which is coming up, we'll be doing a lot of activity around going paperless. And, and a lot of times I work with a man named Brian Sims, who's this brilliant attorney out of uh, Illinois. And um, his whole thing is that he says that it's the number one thing you can do to make your law firm more efficient is to go paperless. Uh, so if you haven't gone paperless, um, email me, Larry at rocketmatter.com or, or go to rocketmatter.com and download our paperless office eBooks or listen to our paperless office webinars. We have a ton of stuff on this topic. Very, very important that you move in this direction. Um, <clears throat> Overprocessing. Um, this is a common area where law firms fall down. And so this, this is like, okay, first of all, the question I would have for you guys is, do you even have standardized repeatable processes? Having standardized repeatable processes is the, kind of like where you need to head so that you do, this, do things the same way every single time. The problem is, is that when you have a standardized process, it may be inefficient. And so you're doing the same inefficient process every single time. So it's really important to take a look at how you do things and to kind of like understand if it's, it's efficient. Um, how do you generate invoices? How do you create documents? Like, are you, do you use document assembly? Do you use, do you generate invoices uh, simply or does it take you like a full day or two days to slow down? Um, and I can show you how to do both of those things uh, quickly. So, um, but zooming out, zooming out, we've been talking about all these different things that you can do in your law firm to maximize your efficiency. You maximize your efficiency, you shorten your cycle time. Again, eliminate waste, shorten cycle time. That increases your throughput rate. The other issue that we talked about was the average case unit value. So um, <clears throat> pardon me, before we get to um, average case unit value, let's talk a little bit about uh, something called constraints. Let me just check in with things. Ah, by the way, um, for the client who says that they have uh, a very interesting suggestion came in from a guy named Barry on the webinar. Um, so Russ, who is seven years old and um, is awaiting 34 years off of $50 per month payments, Barry says that he should sell the contract to a 30 year old. That's a good idea. All right, Russ, something to think about for you. Okay, um, let's talk a little bit about constraints. So constraints, there's a great book on this, by the way. Um, we talk a lot about it in, um, we talk a lot about it in uh, the Lean Law Firm book, uh, but there's a book called The Goal by uh, an Israeli like physicist turn industrial engineer called Eliyahu Goldratt. And it's told in novel form. Like, so it's, it's a textbook. It, it actually kind of inspired how we wrote the Lean Law Firm. The Lean Law Firm isn't as much of a slog as you might think because half of each chapter tells a story about a lawyer who's trying to transform his firm. So the goal is all about this guy who um, has to transform this factory. And it's pretty high stakes because if he doesn't like improve the factory or turn it around, then they're gonna close down the factory and he grew up in the town and everybody's going to lose their jobs. And then in the middle of this, his wife decides to divorce him. And it's this whole crazy thing, but it talks about this concept called the theory of constraint. So um, basically the idea is this, is that like in any system, there are uh, things that will kind of slow you down. And, and it, imagine in a factory, you have these different machines. You have one machine that machine one in the assembly line can spit things out at like 50 units per day. Machine two can spit things out at 40 units per day. Machine three can spit out 70 units per day and that's the last machine. So what is the throughput of this factory? The throughput of this factory is only 40 units per day even though the last one is, is 70 units per day because the 70 units per day machine can only ever receive 40 units per day. So there are some like, like downstream non-intuitive effects about constraints in an organization that don't readily make themselves apparent. Now, from your perspective, you can spot, um, oh, by the way, somebody said, can somebody spell the name of the book? The, oh, my book is The Lean Law Firm. 
And the other book I talked about was called The Goal. And I put these in the chat widget so everybody can see it. Um, so The Lean Law Firm and The Goal. I would recommend, by the way, The Goal is worth listening to if you do, if you do the audible thing is a good way to go. It's actually really funny because they have like, they play like, they play music and stuff. Like when he goes out to dinner with his wife, they play like sexy music. It's like, it's ridiculous. So it's, it's almost worth listening to from the like, the like um, silly entertainment factor of, uh, of all things. Um, <clears throat> so anyhow, back to uh, the theory of constraints, there's, there's a good story in the goal. So, um, the protagonist in the goal has to go from, he has, he gets roped into a boy scout troop where he has to, and this is where one of his key insights occur. So he has to take a boy scout troop from point A to point B. And he's walking with them and there's a slow guy named Herbie. One of the boy scouts is very slow. And, and the problem is with boy scouts is that like, they all have to arrive at point B at the same time. You can't proceed to point C because like, if they all get strung out too far along the path then like, you know, mountain lions come along and they, they devour the Boy Scout. So everybody has to kind of stay together. So um, the entire group was slowed down by Herbie. So, it, but that's true of any industrial process. So that's what, that, what, that's what led to the insight as the slowest machine is, is the bottleneck for the entire process. Same thing is true with a law firm. The, the slowest part of your process is the bottleneck to your entire process. Okay. Um, it doesn't just affect that part or the parts around it. It affects your entire throughput rate. So in order for you to like boost your throughput rate, you need to really do a good job of eliminating as many constraints as possible. Um, <clears throat> okay. Let me get out of the presentation for a minute because I do want to show you guys a couple of things that you can do. Um, and then we have not for very long. Okay. But so I showed you in uh, Rocket Matter, these are Kanban boards. One thing I do want to show you is that um, in here, like when you look, one of the values of a Kanban board is you can see which part of your process are the slowest. And because if you start having, uh, if you start having a bunch of cards like appear at a certain place, I'm going to cancel that for now. It's just more functional. So, so you see this say like litigation, just for arguments purposes, this particular swim lane has more cards than anything else. If a swim lane in a Kanban board has more cards than anything else, odds are you have a bottleneck, right? The other thing about our system is that you can kind of see, all right, well, um, certain things in this thing, there, there's two of them that are red. That means that two of them are overdue. So if you have a Kanban board swim lane that has a big pile up in it, or it has a lot of late stuff in it, then there's a, there's, there's something telling you that something is wrong with that part of the process. That's why Kanban is important. Now, um, I want to show you in, in, in a couple of examples of ways that you can make things more efficient in, in your law firm. So the, the biggest one that we see is the invoicing. Um, and then the, the other thing that I was going to talk about is paperless. So I'm going to do two little things where I'm going to demonstrate, number one, a paperless invoicing flow, and then a paper, paperless document creation flow. And you can kind of get a sense of how it might be better than the manual process. So let's do this. Um, I'm going to add a new matter. And I'm going to call this matter, um, um, I'm, going to, I'm going to make myself the, the client, okay? And I'm gonna call this uh, Larry versus, um, I don't know, uh, Ted, Ted Lasso. That would be a sad thing. And um, let's just say that there is, we're gonna bill on an hourly basis and we're gonna set it up. It's a, it's a specific thing. And I'm just gonna save this matter. What we're gonna do, is we're gonna set this up so we can share an electronic invoice with it. And what we're gonna do here, and there's all sorts of ways to kind of like save time um, doing things like we have like recurring billing and hourly or like recurring billing and, and, and payment plans. So in our case of our friend, you could set up a payment plan to charge $50 a year for the next 34 years if you really wanted to. Um, in Rocket Matter, you could do that. So you wouldn't have to like send out an invoice. It would do it automatically. Um, and we're going to share this invoice with the client, which is Lawrence Board. 
and we're going to share it with email. Right. So uh, now what happens is that if I create an invoice and I send it out, then it's going to be invoiced to, um, uh, it, it's going to be sending it out and everything is going to be electronic. So let's add a quick little billable time. And let's say that it's um, test for Yali. And I'm going to say that this was like 2.2 .2 billable units. And I'm going to save. All right, so we have $220 ready to go, locked and loaded. Let's go ahead and invoice this thing. Now, the nice thing about um, invoicing is that electronically, is that you get rid of the step of printing it out, stuffing it into an envelope, uh, stamping it, sending it out, waiting 30, 60, 90 days, and then getting this information and then like in, in entering the check details into your ledger and rocket matter. All this stuff kind of happens automatically, so you don't have to do any of that work. So if I click process invoice, what's going to happen is an email is going to be sent out now to that email address. And then the client can then go in and pay electronically through a link. So, and then what happens is, is that it's a beautiful thing for attorneys. Like you can go in here and you can even see, like, you can see that the little, like, if I look at the invoice, then this, um, if the client looks at the invoice, this, this little envelope gets open. So you can see if they're looking at it, what date they looked at it and so on and so forth. When they pay it automatically, um, balances out the ledger, money goes into the bank the next day. All those things are like completely automated. So you talk about reducing waste and reducing cycle time and, and getting rid of things that add absolutely no value to the client. Moving in an electronic way for invoicing and billing absolutely does that and reduces your overhead at the law firm. The other thing that you can do is um, you can create, um, let's see, what you can also create flows where you um, create documents for people. So imagine um, you have to create a power of attorney document. Let me sign out of this account and let me log into another one. Let me log into um, kind of an old school one that I use for different demonstration purposes. There's our lovely homepage. Okay, so if you see uh, this client, Abigail Simon, Abigail Simon, this power of attorney, this information came through an intake form. So I have an, uh, a Rocket Matter intake form on my website. So I can slide an iPad over to somebody when they come into my office. I don't have to like write anything down. Um, I, can, I can send them a link through their email and they can go ahead and they can fill out all this information. And you can see like they did fill out all this information, 5301 North, like client home address and all these different things. Um, now what I can do is I can create a document. I can say, all right, let's do a, let's create uh, from a template that I have. Let's, let's stuff this information that was captured through an intake form into the Florida Power of Attorney form, right? And I go ahead and I generate this thing. And it says, I, Abigail Simon down here, a 5301 North Federal Highway. Um, appoint such and such to do this and that. Okay, so so we have our form and we click next. And we're gonna we're going to Florida Power of Attorney demo. And I want it as a PDF. I could also do it as a Word and I click publish. So instead of firing up Word and doing a find and replace and making all sorts of mistakes, then I have this new form that I've just created and it's instantly created. And then what I can do is I can go ahead and I can go ahead and I can share this. I can email this document. I can share it in my portal. I can download it. I can, if it's a Word document, I can make some adjustments to it and then I can send it out to my clients. So you can kind of see how you start embracing some of these automation techniques and you really start reducing waste and you really start increasing your throughput rate and you become more profitable as a result. So that's how lean works. You eliminate waste, you reduce throughput rate, um, I mean, you increase throughput rate by reducing the cycle time and you end up with more money at the end of the day. That's how it works. Now, if you need more information, obviously there's the book, there's leanlawfirmbook.com, which has our podcast recordings. Um, there's the audio audible version. I can always be reached for questions. Just email me, Larry at rocketmatter.com. And um, the course number for this one is 5576 uh, from the Florida Bar. Um, so that's... Um, that's the, that's the course number. That, I may have gone by that a little bit too quickly. So it's 5576. Are there any questions for me? Do you have anything? Um, <clears throat> I think we're in good shape. All right. 
So let's see, what time is it right now? It's 1247. I got you out a little bit early. You still have like 13 minutes um, to go to your next event. Um, I'll stick around for a couple more uh, minutes in case anybody has any Q and A's and would like to ask me any questions. So um, if you're interested in Rocket Matter, by the way, email me. Um, we have a special promotion going on uh, this month for new uh, clients. So just email me, Larry at rocketmatter.com. Tell me you were on the CLE webinar and you want to learn more about that. Um, the, yeah, 5576, it is the Florida Bar course number, um, 0.5 hours of general credits. I want to thank everybody so much. I understand how busy attorneys are. Um, and I know how much it takes to like come out of what you're doing. And, um, you know, so, um, and, and, and dedicate your time to this. Um, the price of our service. So it depends what you want out of our service. If you want like the very basics of just like uh, invoicing and processing and, you know, uh, and payments and so on and so forth, it starts at like $35. If you want to start doing um, more advanced things, like uh, what most people want to do, if you want to start going paperless and, and having a little bit more control over things, then you're looking at uh, more of like a, a $60 price point. And if you go to, if, if you want like super powerful stuff that like allows you to get like really deep insight into your law firm, um, a lot of stuff with like, if you're an insurance defense firm and you have like a lot of those like crazy requirements where you, you want to like define your own rules so that you don't get everything rejected from the insurance carriers. Yeah. Then, then we start going a little bit more towards like the 80, $90 a month. So there's a broad range of rocket matter product offerings that, um, that you can, um, take a look at. Uh, somebody says, does Rocket Matter handle immigration forms? Um, one of our, uh, there's, a, there's a partner company that we use called um, Prima Fossi that handles them. If you have forms that are word-based, um, then you can generate pretty much any form you want. But if you're talking about some of the specific immigration forms that have like live barcodes in them, Currently, we don't handle those, but Prima Facie would be something to take a look at that does handle those. Um, but obviously, any kind of document that gets generated from any place can be stored along with your matter in Rocket Matters because we have full document storage. Anything else? Okay, I think we're in good shape. Hey, thanks for all your kind words and so on and so forth. Really do appreciate that. Um, Please be in touch. I hope to hear from you. And um, you'll be getting recordings tomorrow. Uh, Florida Bar, course number 5576, right there on the screen. Um, and um, you'll be getting recordings and copies of the presentation tomorrow. So thank you so much and have a wonderful remainder of your day.